Hello, welcome back to Lovely's Crafting Lodge. Today we're continuing our series of Journal Madness, and I just kind of wanted to show you, I have put everything, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, in a basket, just to kind of keep it organized here. And I have it in order, I have the Van Gogh uh, stuff first, my idea stuff for that, and then the Asian theme, then after that is the Celestial, and finally the chocolate. So I'm just going to scoot this basket up here out of the out of the direct way and we'll go ahead and get started on the first one that we're going to work on. So today for hashtag journal madness 2021 we are going to work on the um the covers kind of but more focusing on the um the binding and the spines, um, like this one I accidentally cut um, a little bit too deep. Um, funny it's the Van Gogh one, right? Funny, maybe not the right word. Ironic. But I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of repair work right here and kind of show you uh, how I would work, or how I do work through something like that. So we are going to work on that. And just, I, I say covers, but not really the covers of it but um, because I want to sew it in I do have to do something with the spine um, the inside of the spine at least the outside can still be covered further and we'll go over the covers and stuff at another um, on another video date so basically if you're just joining me welcome we are here at Lovely's Crafting Lodge doing uh, journal madness basically there are um, the next couple weeks are chock full of basketball games. So during those plethora of games, I will be crafting and essentially making four journals with the, uh, one each of the theme of Van Gogh, Asian, Galaxy, uh, slash Celestial, and Chocolate. Um, so the grand finale will be the final flip through on the final four night, which is April 3rd, and then it'll be listed on Etsy the night of the championship, which is April 5th at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So join me, jump in wherever you are, make one, make 50. Um, basically, just come hang out and create with me at uh, Lovely's Crafting Lodge. So the first thing I had mentioned uh, when I cut this <laughs> too deep, I said that I have Tyvek tape, and I do, I have it right here. So this stuff has a really interesting kind of chemical gross ar aroma odor to it. I don't really like the scent of it, but it is um, apparently the strongest, uh, most durable blase blase. It is very good. I didn't, um, I didn't really do a trial and error when it comes to this. Is this one of the things you're not supposed to do on video? Um, <laughs> so I didn't really do a trial and error to see if other tapes were just as efficient or more efficient. So it just so happened to be what I um, heard online and watched in videos. So that's what I did. I tried it out first and it's a pretty big roll. So... I don't use it very frequently, but uh, if I ever do run out, I will possibly give another brand or another um, another type a shot, but so far no complaints. Um, I have heard advice that you should sand it before applying because it's so slick and things like that. Um, I've actually used it in combination with carpet tape. <laughs> several times I guess oddly enough but um, so it's stuck really well and I also use uh, Fabra Fix I think that's what it's called even when I'm not um, doing fabric stuff oh that's what I was gonna do so on the outside here to just give it a just to make sure it's fully covered <laughs> Just gonna go right where that um, got a little bit deep right there. And just give that a little, little extra love. It's all better. So this video is coming to you 
much later in the evening than initially anticipated. I'm not going to lie, something about ending, um, doing this video just signaled the end of my, my weekend, the end of Sunday, you know? <laughs> just wait. Not quite ready for it, but whether I'm ready or not, it's coming. So I guess I'd just rather be crafting, right? I'd rather not go to work and do all those types of things. Um, well, I do love my job though. So very fortunate for that. I feel very passionately about crafting. So I'm not sure what all those little fuzzies were here. Maybe some of the fabric, um, the fibers off of the fabric that are in there kind of came off. Okay, so there's our uh, our fix. And see, ta-da, all better. Would never even know. So I, um, I keep this with my carpet tape in a bag. And just, I, um, I don't know. I just really don't like the different um, odors or aromas that come from the, the chemical type. I don't really go for that. I don't know that many people do. So that was a easy solution for me. So uh, hopefully it'll work for you too. The next thing I had this paper sitting out on one of my, um, I had it sitting out on the shelving over here. And uh, this was the coffee and turmeric dye that I had in the set of, um, the Asian inspired ones that I was pulling a lot of the papers from. I just absolutely loved it. But this just really, obviously, you know, the turmeric, it really pulled yellow, even though it does have some coffee to it, but it really pulled too much yellow and I just wasn't feeling it for that, for that book. But I, I mean, wouldn't it look gorgeous with this as the spine? So I was getting ready to, you know, I was tidying up and getting, getting the basket out and everything. And I was like, oh my gosh, this would be beautiful. So this is what we're going to use. Um, to, I'm just covering the spine. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the, um, the inside covers and the outside covers. So I'm actually not going to be working on that today. So this is, uh, the glue that I'm going to be using. Let me get the actual, the actual bottle. Sorry, my voice fades in and out, I'm sure. Um, but this is what I use. Yeah. Fabric fix. So this bottle, I thought I had some bogus. Um, when I ordered it, I ordered it off Amazon and it's been a while ago, but, um, so I got the bottle and I thought maybe I cut it the wrong spot and I'm like, you know, as I'm squeezing it, I'm like shaking and like, <laughs> it's giving me cramps in my hands and I'm like, you know, I don't have any kind of ailment. So I'm like, what is going on? And I see these people using sugar, sugar bells, sugar bell squeeze bottle. And I'm like, why would you get your glue and put it into a different bottle when the bottle that you're using is manageable? You know, it's not too big. And again, you know, I automatically assume it's a me problem. And I'm like, what am I not getting about this? So I just ordered them. Um, and I'm like, what's the worst that can happen, right? Just a few dollars. So I got it. And oh my gosh, people, if you don't like Fab Fabri-Tac, um, you need to give the sugar bell thing, uh, or fabric fix. Sorry. If you don't give the, you need to give the sugar bell thing a try because the bottle makes, it makes the adhesive enjoyable to use if that's even possible. But, um, that was my little, that's my story. So, um, which side to use? Ooh, they're real actually pretty. Um, Typically, I would go for the co more coffee side, but for this one, I, th I think I want to do more of the yellow side. So it's exactly the right height um, to fit inside, but that's not going to work for what I want to do. So I'm going to just um, take my ruler here and um, I'm not really measuring anything. I'm more using it as a tearing ruler. This ruler is kind of cool. It's like a regular ruler on this side, but this side kind of like angles down. So it's like kind of easy to tear with. And I'm tearing with this ruler, though I do have tearing rulers, which were, I don't want to say a complete waste of money, but um, they definitely have their quirks about them. So it's definitely something I need to work on a bit as far as... Um, they're not difficult to use or anything like that. I don't mean to sound, 
in that way. But um, I think the papers that I'm tearing them with could have a, um, a better effect, a better deckled edge. Um, which side was I going to do? Um, I think they would have a better deckled edge if they were, if I wet them first. That's kind of what I've seen um, some folks doing, but I just haven't, um, I just don't get that water pin out when I'm tearing this or that, because I'm always just doing it like in little chunks, you know, I'm never like mass tearing something. And then by the time I think about it, I'm like... I actually only think about it when I'm inking and I'm like, oh, I bet that would look really good or this would give a different effect um, if I had used the uh, water pen. Of course, you know, it's late, too late. So I'm just sticking that down. Um, this, this glue is very, uh, again, not very good for the nose. Probably not good for your brain either. I don't know. <clears throat> I can use my bone folder here to just go down into the edge and kind of get a, a little bit of a crease in there. I'm not trying to like push too hard or puncture through or anything like that, but just trying to get it down in there to work it just so it'll be easy to fold. It won't get, um, I think they say that it'll buckle, which I do believe is what's happening right there. That's buckling. So you just want to smooth that out. And I am, I left the extra at the top there cause I'm going to fold it over just to kind of give it a, um, I don't know, a different reinforcement or strength. And then this right here, I'm just going to add. And then I will trim it off. Uh, let's see, we're going with, yeah, we're going with the non-coffee side. So we'll go to about right there. But yeah, this Sugar Bell bottle, I believe it's for icing and piping. Uh, maybe piping's not the right word. But it's for applying icing, um... And the plastic of the Fabrifix bottle is what makes it difficult to come out. I thought it was the formula inside that made it difficult to come out, but proven wrong happily. So there is that applied. And again, just using a bone folder, you could use, you know, um, the other scoring tools and whatnot just to flatten it out. Basically, spreading the adhesive, the Fabra Fix, the glue evenly, and then down into the creases. So, and then just fold it up like that, just to kind of just to kind of work it slowly. It doesn't have to be all of a sudden. Oh, I just ripped it. So I'll take this and do a bit of adhesive here. All right, hopefully that fixes it. Perfect. And gently fold that again, just trying not to make it worse than it already is. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Sorry. I guess when you go into problem solving mode, everyone has a different uh, approach. <clears throat> it's really unfortunate that I used uh, this double-sided paper on a one-sided project, but I guess that's just part of it, right? You got to make that that choice what you're gonna what you're gonna apply. I think that's a it's a love-hate relationship with uh, scrapbooking paper for me. I love double-sided scrapbook paper because it shows me, kind of like I was telling you guys before, like what matches and what what um, tones or prints will look well together. But also, um, I hate it because I 
have to choose <laughs> which side I want to be um, exposed if I'm gluing it to a page. So typically if I have double-sided scrapbook paper, it's one, it's going to be thicker paper. I found that has been a um, pretty common theme, but also that I'll be able to use it for signature covers and things like that. Now the one-sided scrapbook paper, there still is thick, really thick one-sided scrapbook paper, but um, that's something that I would use for an outside, like the out outside external cover or um, something that would be one only one side showing. So um, ephemera or bips and bobs, things like that. So we're just applying this other here. And again, the outside spine isn't going to look like this. I'm going to do something different with it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do exactly, but I know that I'm going to do something else with it. I don't want the yellow on the outside. I want the yellow to be part of the inside. Seems like it has similar hues to the Starry Night painting that he, that he did, so I really like that. Um, I don't know that I have a favorite Van Gogh painting. Um, or sketch. I suppose I just like them all for their own reasons. All right, I like it. Then nice, and you'll never know that I cut it too deep, right? Well, you'll know. No one else will know. Okay, so our first signature, second signature. This is just two signatures. Let me double check to make sure I got the right. Yes, this was the first one, and if you recall, our center page here is Starry night with the vellum. And then our second signature. Um, I usually don't leave a plain page on the front, but again, I'm just I just kind of want to do something different with this book. Um, it's a different size than I've ever done. I do like how I have it all um, different lengths and things like that. I've done that before, but never to this degree. Something about her is so familiar. And then here is our centerpiece of our last one. Okay, so what I need to do now is um, arrange the pages. So I do last signature first. So what I need to do is arrange the pages in the, um, the vertical stance that I want them. So what I mean by that is this is a full, full height page, right? So that's fine. And then this one right here is just a little bit shorter, so I'm just going to bring it up to the middle here. And the next one is full height, so I'm just going to bring it down to perfect, you know, just to bring it right in the middle there. And this one is a short page, so I can either bring it all the way down, all the way up, or I can just keep it kind of in the middle. Well, based on the next page that I have, I want to bring this one down. And then the following page I want to bring up. And that's just for no reason other than that's just what I wanted to do. You can have them both in the middle, one up, one down. You can do whatever you want. And this page I want, I want the vellum in the middle. And then I want the following page with the text from the Van Gogh book. Uh, right in the middle as well. Now these two sketchbook pages, I want these staggered uh, one at the top and one at the bottom. I think that'll create a really neat layering effect when uh, you're actually using the journal. So here's a full size one, so that one doesn't need to be adjusted at any rate. And here is our newsprint page that we will put this one at the bottom. And our sketchbook paper is full size, so it goes right there. Our music paper, I'm going to scoot up towards the top just so the rip edge stays within the book. Okay. And next we have our um, two pocket thingy. Again, I'm going to do this. Actually, I think I want this little ripped page to come out of the top of the book, the music. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like that. Then the double pocket there will be there, and this is a sketchbook page, which I want directly in the middle. And this ripped page here, the rip at the bottom, this one I want to stay within there. All right, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do is just fold it together here and take a pencil, hopefully it has lead, yes. And I'm going to oops, gently wiggle it down, make sure it's all together. And now I'm going to mark this. So I'm doing the three hole pamphlet stitch. So I'm going to go here. Here. And here. Alrighty. I'm actually, because this is the same, um, the height of the outer page is going to be the same for this. I'll go here, here, and here. Just the same. And marking it on the spine. Ooh. That got crazy. Okay. And the first signature will go right here. And just mark it here. So a lot of people have a hand tool called an awl. I believe it's A-W-L. And it's like a pokey tool that they make their holes with. I don't actually have one of those. I have uh, something different. Oh, so I am folding the pages inside out. So the V that I just made inside um, to be the proper way that they're folded, I'm going opposite now. So they're going this way. Um, I make the hole from the opposite side. So i just get these get the proper fold here. For some reason they weren't Usually they kind of just like uh, come into one another, you know. These pages are from an older book. Could be why. It's giving a little bit of a fuss. Did I just undo all the work I did? <clears throat> Sorry, real life, the struggle. Okay, I'm just gonna go through one by one and just refold them backwards here. Imagine there's a better way to do this, but this is just um, the only thing my brain can come up with right now. Well, that vellum is really difficult to go wrong way with. Hmm, I never noticed that before. So. I'm just working along one by one. And now this one. And our music again. Alright. So this has given us the reverse effect here. So now this is our centerpiece. And then this is the front cover. So we've literally put it in folded it opposite of what I did the first time. So the tool that I have, I do not know, Crocodile 2, that's this thing. Um, I guess it has a lot of different features on it. I haven't dug into it sufficiently, but I can say that it's never failed me thus far. So not that I have that much experience, but you know, so far so good. I do see a huge advantage to having this, and I also see the advantages to having it all. So I can see both sides of it for sure. Um, this, I'm not sure what brand this is. Maybe, maybe Cropodile is the brand. I don't know, it's kind of the blue of We Are Memory Keepers, so maybe it's, no, I feel like they would have something on there that said We Are Memory Keepers. Um, so I'm basically, well, I'm just poking the holes through um, to 
put the binding to put the lace. Lace? No. I'm not using lace. <laughs> I'm using um, uh, wax linen thread. I was using um, at one time, I believe, like a spool of uh, really, not really thin, but thinner yarn to, um, that I had. To, ooh, I don't remember why I had it, probably to crochet, but I don't know. It seems smaller than anything I would have used. Um, okay, so here's our center. Now we're going to fold it back the other way. So anyway, I was using... Um, that thread and it just um it was doing just fine and then I forget I think Amazon had a suggestion of wax linen thread and I was like hmm I guess I'll give that a shot. Ooh doesn't that look good with his facial features and hair there? I like it. Clearly I've never used that one before as I just uh pulled the wrapper off. But it came with like this I keep all my binding stuff in this little basket here. Um, happy things inside. Happy planner folks, shout out to you. All my planner gals. Um, yeah, so it came like with this big variety pack and I've used a few of them, but um, there's none of them that I don't like. So that's been an advantage. You know, sometimes when you get a multi-pack of something, you end up just favoring one or two, but that really hasn't been the case with these items here. So, I'll go ahead and get my, uh, I don't know if it's called a darning needle or a dull needle, I'm not sure, but just a little metal one. And then I do three times the length or the three times the height of the page. So one, two, three. And I'll take my, I suppose my sticky scissors and cut that off. Set it up here because um, I'll set it in the basket because we're getting ready to use it again <clears throat> on the next signature. So just thread it through. And I don't usually tie a knot. The wax linen thread just kind of holds itself in. And if I hadn't wiggled this like a Sally, I would be able to just um, poke it through. But I do, I am going to go through each page here and make sure I actually hit the hole because my pages are staggered. If my pages were not staggered, I imagine you could just guess and, you know, push it through. But I just really want to make sure this is proper here. Don't want to be shortchanging any of these gorgeous pages. Okay, got that through. All right, so we'll go in and then leave a little bit of a tail. And then, oh my gosh, I almost did this wrong. <laughs> okay, time out, rewind. We have to punch the holes in the book. Okay, so that's the back. And I don't think it really matters on this one, but um, so yeah, we have to punch these holes. I'll try to stay in frame there. We'll do in there. And then the other one kind of to the side. And then these up here. I was getting ready to sew it through and I was like, yeah, make sure it goes through the spine. And I was like, oh, spine. I don't have a spine. <laughs> oh, my spine's over on the other side of the desk. Okay. So let's pull that through. All right, so we are doing the back cover, or we're doing the back signature first. So we went through already, and so now we are on, um, you know, coming through to the spine. Oh my. Oh, I think I've ever done this on camera. Just trying to keep you in view here. So 
to go through that middle hole right there. And just kind of kind of get everything in order here. Okay. And then um, <clears throat> on the outside, I'm going to go through the top hole. And corresponding, going to go through this top hole. Again, if your um, pages were all the same size, or maybe you have, you know, a skill that I don't, um, <laughs> you go through here. And, oh, missed out gal. And music. Miss this one. There it is. I'll give that a gentle pull and down to the bottom one. There we go. And through the back, the, the bottom cover, the bottom hole of the spine, words are hard. And then back through <clears throat> the center. Center here. These larger pages are a little bit harder to work with. I actually thought they were going to be a little bit easier to work with. Hmm. Maybe my brain's just not uh, on the game tonight. Or in the game. Definitely is harder to do on camera than in real life. You know what I mean? Alright, so we're all done with that. And just giving it a gentle, gentle tug here. Go one on each side of this center piece. I just kind of try to make them even-ish. Um, you don't have to. You know, it's your journal. You can do whatever you want. And I'm going to tie one, two knots, and three. And it just kind of secures it in place. And I just kind of, the wax that may have been stripped off or came off a smidge, I just go ahead and kind of rub it back in there and just kind of form these down. There we go. And then I go back and just double check, make sure everything is in place. Just so. Perfect. Okay. And I'll set that aside and grab our first signature and do the same thing. Basically, uh, lining up our pages the way that we want. So the height is what I'm looking for. And this one I am going to trim down after the fact. preserves everything that I want. Okay, good, very nice. Maybe I didn't crease this very well. Maybe that's why it's giving me a rough time. Quite possibly, quite possibly so. using the bone holder there to kind of give it a more firm crease. It's going to look so good with that newsprint right there. I like how that looks. The grayish tinge of the newsprint. And the drawing or the sketch pages next. Yeah, so my thought is maybe this um, is not coming out 
the way uh, folding reverse because I didn't crease them very well. That's just a thought. That's not anything. This one also I will have at the top. This will be full length. And here's our center piece. I do want this to be in the middle. Height wise, in the middle. Obviously, it's the middle of the journal. See? There it is, the middle. So it creases the other way also. Oh, it's pretty hard. The, the vellum is kind of like stubborn, right? Like once it gets the way it wants to be, it's like, okay, that's it. You had your chance. That was my fold. That was my one fold. <laughs> I'm done. Need not change. All right. Love it. Okay. Let's get that fixed up there and that there. Middle piece here. Very certain this is going to be gorgeous. All right, I'll fold it up. All right, and we'll get our crocodile two out. Fold it in reverse. Of how it's going to be in the book. Make the outside the inside. Hmm. Maybe I have to change my method here with these larger pages. Maybe I need to start folding them this way as I am assembling. Mm, the insight. Very profound. No. <laughs> it's not. I know. That's that turmeric avocado. I think it's pretty cool to see that um, the turmeric coffee on the inside pages and then the turmeric avocado on the outside. Um, I mean, the turmeric coffee on the spine and then the turmeric avocado on the inside pages, you know, like the actual journaling pages or sketch pages or whatever this is, uh, whatever this is going to be used as. All my little hands aren't going to fit. All right, so I didn't really want to do this yet, but I'm seeing that it's troublesome. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and tear this off now because my hands won't fit. I don't have, like, unusually small hands or anything. I just... These papers are much, um, much larger. Dimensionally, they may not be so much larger, but as far as like the techniques and the tools and things that I typically use, they are. So the tools I typically use are, I suppose, best suited for a different size, but it's completely doable. But this is one of the things where I feel like an all would have been um, advantageous to have. So we're just going to pull this over here and do a pokey. So I do want to share with you guys that, gals, you folks, that I am, um, while I am not directly working on this journal outside of uh, filming hours, <laughs> I am struggling to not think about it. Um, 
maybe I'm an immersive crafter, right? So I just like everything I think about, I'm reading about it, I'm searching about it, I'm learning about it, uh, whatever I'm making the journal about, you know, uh, whatever the topic, uh, and or the techniques that I'm using or want to use or just I'm curious about too. So it's kind of becomes a really immersive experience for me by my own doing, you know, you don't have to be that way about it, but I think that's just how, um, maybe one of the reasons why I like junk journaling so much, and maybe it's not so much junk journaling as it is treasure book making or journal creation or, um, I don't know, I feel like the title junk journaling isn't proper to what I'm doing. Um, but I have been reading, you know, I've read, let's just say countless. I have read countless things about Van Gogh. And one thing, um, it has not been in years that I've really read anything about him or his work or his life or anything. It's been years. Um, so... I saw uh, several articles actually that had quotes from him and um, some of them are really uh, I had no idea he said that kind of feeling when I read it and I think I'm going to, as um, I compose this journal and, um, you know, kind of feel the vibe of him and, you know, just create, I will consider some of the quotes um, that I've read that might um, make it in, you know, maybe on a journaling card, maybe not. So... That's one thing I wanted to share with you. And the second thing is, oh gosh, I just love that. Um, the second thing is on our chocolate journal, the full sheets of ephemera that I had from Susan Taylor Brown, her Etsy shop is Poppiness, I believe the kit itself was chocolate dreams and she might have more than one chocolate theme on there but that one specifically is the one that i had previously printed out you know months ago um and just had in that plastic folder i actually created a digital kit of hand dyed mocha papers that i made so the cocoa and coffee, I scanned them and put them into um, a PDF file. Well, I think it's a zip file is how it's the proper term. So it's a zip file that contains two PDFs, a total of 14 pages. And they are all original and they are hand dyed. It's not like I um, am definitely not tech savvy enough to go in and digitally um, do brush strokes and things like that but you know that's a project for for another day so um, I created that and as I was creating it obviously I, I didn't want to put something out there that I haven't personally tested um, you know while I think it's a great idea you know it the idea sometimes is missed in the execution <laughs> so I went ahead and um, took the pages that were already printed on one side from her digital kit and I printed my digital kit on the reverse because they are background pages um, and I, I love writing on that cardstock it is so I call it cardstock but in my head cardstock is grainy um, but this is like 100 pound computer paper that is just butter smooth to write on I have not come across a pen that doesn't just glide across it so oh my gosh look how good that looks oh I love it um yeah so I printed my digital on the reverse side of her larger images and I think 
I'm going to use those as journaling cards um, or maybe, um, I don't know, whatever else I come up with or come across or um, whatever. But I just want to share that with you that that work was done outside of filming hours. Um, my printer and me do not have the best relationship. Uh, it's uh, user error, as most things with me are. Um, <laughs> I just don't understand um, why it takes it. Why, like, what is spooling? Why does it take a million years on one thing and then the other one is like zoop, zoop, zoop and just shoots right out, you know, like shooting onto the floor? And I just, I don't understand. <laughs> I do not get it. But, um, so instead of getting frustrated with technology on camera with you, I uh, got frustrated on my own. Um, it actually wasn't very frustrating, surprisingly. Um, so uh, it went smooth and I printed it out and just gorgeous and absolutely love it. And I went ahead and um, hand cut those out so we could just get right to the work of it. Um, a lot of stuff I'm using is going to be cut out already just because when I printed out the kits, well, when I bought the kits and I printed the kits, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, so, yeah. Um, I was just like, everyone talks about hand cutting and fussy cutting and how it's just the worst and so much work and, and you're never caught up on it. And I was kind of the opposite. I had all my fussy cutting and hand cutting caught up but I didn't have any projects. So I was kind of um, maybe a, a little ambitious or ahead of time with that. So it's been actually really nice to, once I get a, a feel for something to just like go in and create, create, create. And the stuff's already cut out and all I have to do is, some of it's even inked, like whatever reason I was inking some days. And so some of it's inked and I just like, put it on there. I was, when I was, um, creating Christmas journals and stuff for the holidays, all my stuff was already printed out, inked, everything. And it was just like, I ran through it so fast and I could not believe that I would ever use that many images and they're gone <laughs> just like that. So, um, there we go. We're all bound up on one. I'm just going to put that up in our um, folder here and going to our vision theme next. Sorry if that was right in my face here. So um, I'm going to do a, a little investigation here on the book. Flip through. I take a drink of water. Okay. So I'm just kind of recalling, you know, making four journals with different themes. I seem to remember little pieces here and there of them, but to their entirety, I don't remember them. Um, okay, so this one I want to do, let me just set that there, and I am going to grab some of this coffee paper here. Maybe that one. Not real sure on that one, though. Okay. And I am going to use a different hmm, technique, maybe. I'm not sure what to call it. Different materials. For sure. I am going to use, for this spine, I am going to use the carpet tape that we have here. And the reason I bought this carpet tape, I saw someone making their own fabric washi with carpet tape. And I'm like, I don't even know what carpet tape is and I clearly need fabric washi. So <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> so I am going to put some tape here. This is really, really sticky. Okay, and I'm going to use my Q 
cute little reindeer scissors. These are my sticky scissors. I know Gail Augustinelli, if you watch her, she has a pair of striped sticky scissors and they look so nice. Like these are my, um, I think they're super cute. There's a little Santa Claus on there and they came with like, it was in a set of two and I got them on an after Christmas sale. Seriously, out with my friend like 10 years ago <laughs> and these have been in my Christmas uh, wrapping box for so long. I'm just using the back of the scissors here just to kind of work it in there. You can use um, scoring tool or bone folder or just your finger. I'm just pressing it down nice and firm. Um, yeah, so we were out and we like love after Christmas clearance stuff. And I think it was at Target that we saw these um, uh, and picked them up for, it seriously had to be like 10 cents. And so I got these two scissors for like 10 cents and I just, you know, every time I, um, you know, uh, use them or have them out, I always think of her, so. Fond memories. This is the best ones, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, well, I suppose I'll start like this. I'll fold this side down and then I'll fold this side down. Just like that. Um, no, I'm gonna cover that. Sorry, I was just thinking like, should I cover the outside spine? And then I think whatever I do on the outside, I'm gonna actually put it all the way around. So um, we'll stitch this in and then the, um, the signature um, stitching will be covered right here with whatever we decide to do. I really wish I had some kind of um, like authentic, um, authentic, what's the right word? I want to say in my head, I keep saying garb and I'm like, no, that's not what you're trying to say. Um, textile, you know, material. So we'll just pull this off here. And I'm not going to rip it off, but I am going to rip this. And I'm just going to put a piece big enough to cover right there. Mash it down and then flip it over and pull this side off. Oh, <laughs> no. Ay, ay, ay. Alrighty, just continue pulling this off. This has literally never happened, right? Only, only at this moment. Alright, there we go. And then tear another piece and stick it on. This is just an idea I had. I'd, never done a tearing like this before but it's kind of like it's not really collaging but I just kind of wanted to give it a different look in the middle here and sometimes like this coffee dyed paper for whatever reason was um I was trying ah I know what I was I was trying things out when I like way back in the summer you know a million years ago in the summer um and I was just like trying stuff that I saw, right? And then I was like, what if this? What if that? And so I just started like trying different stuff and I was out in the field and I was um, dyeing or drying the papers that I had coffee dyed. And I just took some of them and I like lightly crunched them up. And I'm like, I wonder what's gonna happen to these. like. What will they, you know, like, will they smooth out? Will coffee get really deep inside of the wrinkles? Well, the fact is really, it just kind of weakened it. Um, and again, it could be the paper that I was using. Um, I, I mean, I think it could depend on a lot of different factors, but 
it didn't really do much, but the paper felt really weak after that, and I didn't really care for that. So I um, obviously, junk journal, did not throw it away, and I um, was just waiting to tear it up, you know, collage it. So the stack layers that I kind of got going on here, I'm just going to glue them down. I imagine you could use any glue. I've got, I just had this on the desk, so that's what I'm going to use. I do like things on the spine to obviously be sturdy, right? You don't want some loosey-goosey things happening. It's your spine, so it holds it all together. This is really fun. I'm really happy I um, <laughs> committed to making this video um, and getting it done tonight. Yeah, I was really feeling, uh, feeling the Mondays already you know always wishing I had more time to craft <clears throat> but this, this series has been really fun I'm, I'm not sure if anyone else is participating or joining in but I love it um, it's definitely a lot of fun I didn't do any kind of uh, I don't want to say I didn't pre-plan because I did but I didn't announce any of this happening so um, you know, I guess it really wasn't fair to other people to participate. So uh, this is thus far, you know, dare to speak too soon. But this is, seems like something I will do again. It was really, thus far, is pretty fun. So all I have here is a jar of just a little bit of water from the, the faucet and a brush. I am going to use the stains by Patty Pockets and um, just going to put it over the top of this, I guess to, I don't know if it seals it. I've only used this uh, a handful of times. One was on the journal um, that I sent out and what did I use the other one on? Oh, I made some of um, these like uh, Roxy... Uh, is that right? Ra Rachel from Roxy Creations? Is that it? Um, anyway, Roxy Creations, that's her channel. She um, had this tutorial of how to make these expandable pockets. Oh my gosh. Dare I put the video in the link because you will too be addicted like I was. But yes, I'll put the video link. Um, and then I watched um, Eve with Scrapbooking with Me. I watched her do it. And I was just hooked. This has, um, the Stains by Patty Pockets has a uh, coffee aroma to it. And it's just, I don't know, I just love it. I, I believe I bought this on Patricia Vermontes Etsy store. But I don't know how, is Patty Pockets a real person? And she has her own site, and I should have gone there. Or Patty only sells with Patricia? Oh, no, I have no idea. Well, I bought it from Patricia on her Etsy. That's what I do know. Um, and it's just really, it gives, like, a really cool look. Look how it really got into those crinkles I was just talking about. It's almost like this is doing what I thought the coffee would do on the original dye. Ooh, the plot thickens. So, um, our next video is tomorrow, and um, we're going to be doing the same thing with the assembling and the spine work, and if, if we're going to have a full exposed spine, we might end up doing a cover. I am just going with it, you know, as it comes along. Whatever the idea is, just go with it. I've been liking it. It's been fun. I hope you guys are having fun too, even if you may not be creating along with me. You know, the beauty of the internet, right? Um, <laughs> good, bad, they're there forever. The videos are there forever. I suppose you could delete them if you want to, or you could. YouTube can delete them if they want to. It's their platform. But, um, yeah. They're out there, so the series is there. It has its own playlist, so you can just